Washington Monument. No, it looks like green what screen to me. Yeah, it's definitely green screen. Definitely green screen. Send. <laughs> ben, Ben, they're talking about green screen again. Oh, let me add them. Here we go. While we're flattered that you would watch our videos so closely that you would believe that we are pulling the wool over everyone's eyes, we ask that you kindly stop talking about this as it is blatantly untrue. Thanks for watching. Send. What you just saw is a reenactment of an internet argument. And don't worry, you'll see more of it. Welcome to the show. That's Matt behind the camera. Noel's out recording somewhere. Uh, Scully is playing it casual. I'm Ben. Of course, you are you. And that makes this stuff they don't want you to know. Now, folks, some of you may have read the title of this show and thought immediately, whoa, 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 pump your brakes, Ben. I have won an argument online. In fact, I've won several. But I can virtually guarantee you, I can, with near certitude, I can guarantee you that whomever you think you won an argument against still disagrees with you. Actually, they think you are more wrong than they did before. It is very, very difficult, nearly impossible to win an argument online. And you may be thinking, well, that's an interesting point, but why is stuff they don't want you to know covering it? Who is they in this situation? They are you, or more specifically, your brain, which betrays you each and every time you attempt to have a rational argument. Here are five reasons why you can't win an argument online. Number one, when you argue online in a forum and you're just, you know, typing an opinion like you are wrong, all caps, about Willie's burritos, you fool, I will see you burn. You're actually only communicating a little bit and you're missing most of what they say and most of what you say in reply is completely whooshing over their heads. And that is because uh, of a statistic you may have heard before, or a percentage rather. It's the idea that uh, when you're arguing in person, like uh, when Matt and I would be arguing in person or something, 55% of what we say is our body language, right? How do our hands move? How are we standing? Are our arms crossed? Stuff like that. 38% our tone of voice. And if you add that up, then that would mean by this reasoning that only 7% of what we communicate in person involves the actual content of our speech. But is this true? This study or this number comes from a researcher named Albert Mehrabian. And Albert Mehrabian for a long time studied the percentages of conversation in person. And he had these studies that originally said, well, 60% of it maybe is body language and 40% of it is what you say. But that 55, 38, 7% number uh, comes from his synthesis of a couple of other studies. Here's the thing. This study doesn't apply across the board. This doesn't mean that every time you're talking to your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your sibling or your parents or your kids, it doesn't mean that they are 55% just watching your elbows or something like that. It does mean, however, that body language and intonation play a massive role in human communication. So if you are on a forum and you are typing and the other person is arguing back to you and it's through text, and you're just using the alphabet, and I mean, maybe some emojis or some GIFs, whatever, what you're actually doing is communicating a minuscule amount of what you're actually trying to say. Number two, and this is gonna sound crazy. Okay, so let's say you have a pre-existing opinion and you've held this for a while, and then along comes some reliable source or an internet stranger that happens to have unassailable evidence proving your opinion is wrong or contradicting part of it. Most of us would like to think, well, I being a rational person and a little bit smarter than the average bear, and I am like Fox Mulder, right? I want the truth. I want to believe. And my opinion takes a back seat. Here is some raw footage I just uploaded from the day we shot. I hope you enjoy it. We enjoyed ourselves. Thanks for watching. Send. Are you kidding me? Green screen all day, all the way, every day. Were they gonna fly you to DC for this crap? You're kidding me. Give me a break. Send.
Well, it turns out that is a gigantic misconception for everyone. Yes, for you as well, whomever was just about to start typing that comment. Yeah, whoa, no, 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 I see you. Just listen to the rest of this. It's called the backfire effect. What tends to happen to most people is that when we run into evidence contradicting an existing belief that we already have, instead of changing our belief, we exaggerate it. We believe it more. So uh, let's say, uh, as one study proposed, um, let's say that you are identifying as a conservative person or a liberal person or something like that, and you don't support the war in Iraq. And some scientists give you uh, one news story that says, oh, uh, weapons of mass destruction were found in Iraq. And then they give you a second news story that says, there were no weapons of mass destruction found in Iraq. Well, it turns out one of these stories is fake, but the story that is fake doesn't matter because the liberal side, or the people identifying liberal, and the conservative side, people identifying conservative, picked whichever one they already agreed with. As you know, the case was there were no WMDs found in Iraq, so people who were convinced that there were refused to believe that the first story was fake. As a matter of fact, they were more convinced that uh, these WMDs existed. Now, I'm using a, a political example, and, and please don't let that ruin this for you. This could go to, you know, best type of sandwich. This could go to, uh, you know, various health scares. This could go into any pre-existing belief. Again, the backfire effect, a term coined by Brendan Nyhan and Jason Reifler. Check it out. Number three, the caveman effect, the, the living in the wild, uh, evolving in jungles, fighting for survival effect. Our brains are hardwired to treat every argument, regardless of how small it is, as a potential fight situation. As some, like, if you are, if you were saying, I don't know, maybe uh, The Godfather 2 was uh, the best movie ever, and then someone turns around like, did you just say it was the best movie ever? And you begin to argue. Uh, this isn't just a casual conversation about film, at least not to your brain. In times of high stress situations, in times of debate and uh, in online or in-person arguments, the executive functions of your brain, the things that handle strategy, the things that handle rational thinking, they don't function as highly. What kicks into overdrive to replace that is your amygdala. And your amygdala is the thing that's in charge of your fight flight, freeze, or appease responses. You've heard of fight or flight. That's, you know, will this escalate into physical violence? You've heard of flight, should I leave, before these three people <laughs> who hate the Godfather too decide to join forces against me. Should I freeze? Should I withdraw? Should I just stop responding? Which the YouTube equivalent of that might be someone saying, I don't have time for this. You know, dislike. Uh, or will you appease? And that's the more rare one. That, that happens much more often in in-person conversations than it does, of course, online, where everybody is mysterious uh, and everybody is anonymous and everybody is, again, according to their opinion, correct. Let's stick with the brain. Number four, you can become addicted to the feeling of being right. Notice the wording there, the feeling of being right. Sort of like the pursuit of happiness. So uh, whether or not you are actually correct, factually accurate, what happens when you win an argument in person is the same thing as what happens when you win an argument online. Your body floods you with these triumphant hormones, particularly adrenaline and dopamine. You know, you, you feel like uh, Kanye West must feel all the time. You feel like Donald Trump must feel all the time, you feel unassailable, maybe even in a way invincible, and you become addicted to that feeling. You want it again. You want that flash of dopamine. You know what I mean? That, that rush in your chest of the adrenaline, that feeling that you are somehow a little bit better than the average bear, which could leave you in an unfortunately complicated situation in the near future. That's number five. Our chances of seeing contradicting opinions, or even opinions that aren't just some sort of preaching to the choir thing aimed at our confirmation bias, the chances of seeing differing views are lowering dramatically and continue to lower. And this is because some online leviathans, uh, advertisers, things like Facebook and such, they want you 
to see the stuff that they think you want to see so that your opinions aren't challenged, so that you don't have that uh, firing off of an emotional reaction or an unfavorable one. So this means that based on all your past activity, as much as they can collect, they're going to show you stuff that will continue to keep that wave going. You've probably seen the TED talk about uh, the search bubble, right? Uh, and you've probably seen how when your friends search for something online, they may get very different results. When your friends are using uh, some sort of social media app, they may get very different orders of things in their newsfeed or their timeline or whatever the case may be. There's a website called You Are Not So Smart, which has a, a great line about this and it's terrifying. And it points out that the media of the future may be delivered to you not just based on the websites you visited, but also on any other part of you that can be quantified, your mood, the time of day, the time of the year, where you grew up, the places that you had moved to in the past, where you've been looking to move later, your relationships, are they ending, are they ongoing, is it serious, do you fight, do you look up the same things online? Any value that can be assigned in some way to, to measure you as a collection of data and numbers can and will be used to limit your ability to see the world. But, you know, maybe it's not all bad. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe this is not an inevitable situation. Maybe we, just as you know, all of us members of this show and all our friends and families, all those strangers that we have yet to meet across the world, maybe we can band together, you know, maybe we can break free of the ideological uh, social values and social dynamics that make us feel like we need to be right even when we're factually wrong. Or maybe we can uh, evolve past the physiological limits of our brain because we don't live in a savanna anymore fighting lions. Maybe we can somehow cast out the, the strange horse blinder algorithms of software, of Facebook, of these other online institutions and advertisers that don't ever want you to feel like you have to think critically. Hey, what are we doing, man? I tell you what, why don't you come over here? I've got all that footage that I was talking about that we shot. You can, you can look through all of it. And, and finally, once and for all, I can prove to you that it was not green screen. And then we can just move on together. I mean, maybe, but honestly, at this point, our chances don't look good and it's not a fair fight. If you'd like to learn more about arguing online and the ways in which our brains betray us during this activity, then check out the audio podcast that Noel and Matt and I are doing this week. You'll get more detail about the neurochemistry that occurs when you are in an argument. You'll also hear more about some of the psychology behind trolling and perhaps the future of online conversation. In the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about your brain's traitorous neurochemistry during times of emotional distress, check out the uh, link below where we've got our Deceptive Brain series. And I just wanna warn you, it's kind of a downer. But enough about me, uh, have you won an argument online? Are you gonna win one in this comment thread? I love, I'd love to watch, let me, let me know what you think. Let me know if humanity is capable of evolving past this. Let me know if you think you have. I certainly have it. And as always, if you have an idea for a future topic we should cover, let us know either in the comments on our Facebook or Twitter or email us directly. We are conspiracy at howstuffworks.com.